If you are planning to set up a Yaskawa FP605, we've got good news. The setup process is quick and easy for a qualified electrical professional to complete. The Technical Training Department of Yaskawa America Incorporated presents Easy FP605 AC Drive Setup for Industrial Fan and Pump Applications. At Yaskawa, we know that your time is valuable, and that's why we've designed the FP605 to meet all of your needs. In this video, we will cover an overview of what's provided in the packaging box with every FP605, the quick setup procedure up to motor test operation, and additional procedures for some common installation steps related to control wiring and programming. Let's begin with a quick look of what you'll get in the box with each new FP605 drive. Note the quick reference label on the box exterior. This new quick reference label makes it easy to download product manuals and the new Drive Wizard mobile application before installation. Yaskawa has enhanced the information package with our newer AC drives. The needs of our customers have shaped the media and the included product instructions. In the box, you'll find a survey card with Yaskawa technical support contacts. After you complete your new FP605 installation, we want your valuable feedback on how we can evolve our product even more to meet your needs. In exchange for 90 seconds of your time, you'll receive a priority phone code that puts you at the front of the line if you call our hotline for technical support. The large fold-out quick setup procedure makes the complicated simple with easy to understand graphics. The procedure focuses on the tasks that all of our customers will do with AC drives. You'll also find the installation and primary operation manual. Use this document if you need more details to support what's in the quick setup procedure. And a mounting drilling template is included with all FP605 models through and including the 143A drive. Now we'll show you how easy it is to start up a new FP605 AC drive using the included instructions. With 10 simple steps, startup of your FP605 will be quick and easy. Later on, we'll also touch on additional procedures for some common applications related to control wiring and programming. We're about to demonstrate the procedure to set up an FP605 drive, but first, Make sure to read the safety instructions carefully before you install, wire, or operate this product. Safety is always critical when dealing with high power circuitry. Wear gloves, safety glasses, an arc flash rated coat, and hearing protection. All electrical work should be performed by authorized personnel with appropriate startup training. A proper lockout tagout process is absolutely essential, so you'll need lockout tagout equipment. And it's also a good idea to gather all the tools required so things go smoothly throughout the process. In this startup, we'll be using Yaskawa's UL Type 1 certified enclosure, model FP65U2011AFA. The first step is to confirm the drive and motor specifications. Drive information can be found on the label on the side of the drive and the front cover. Motor specifications can be found on the motor nameplate. It's important to verify that voltage, current, horsepower, and frequency are all less than or equal to the drive's ratings. Note. Sizing requirements should have already been completed by a drive specialist. This is just used to confirm general requirements before installation. Then, in step two, confirm the correct drive installation environment. There are multiple enclosure types for the FP605 with different ratings for environmental protection, so be sure to reference your drive's manual before installation. 
This includes, but is not limited to, temperatures, humidity, elevation, vibration, and pollution that the FP605 could be exposed to. In step three, use the enclosed drilling template to mount the drive. Yaskawa offers mounting templates, mechanical drawings, and 3D models to assist installation planning and to ensure the proper mounting points. Be sure the template is level before marking the mounting locations. The FP605 features keyhole style mounting to make installation quick and easy. Mounting clearance information is provided for installation of a single drive or multiple drives. In step four, select the motor and power wires, wire strip length, crimp terminals, and branch circuit protection. Locate the drive model in the chart to find the correct wire range. Wire size and clamp down torque information is also listed on a label on the inside of the front cover. On this label is a gauge that shows the extent you should strip back insulation on control, power, and ground wiring. Both input and output terminal size and shape vary depending on model size, so be sure to use the right tools and torque settings for your model size as indicated in the instructions. Yaskawa recommendations for branch circuit protection are listed in the Quick Setup Procedure and the Installation and Primary Operation Manual. Step 5 involves removing the keypad and front cover and reinstalling the conduit bracket for non-cabinet installations. Also remove the necessary conduit knockouts on the conduit bracket plate specific to your application. Confirm that all power sources are turned off and you have performed the correct lockout tagout procedure before doing any wiring. In step six, install the motor wiring and power wiring. Once all power is deactivated and locked out, connect the motor ground to the drive's ground terminal. Then wire the drive output terminals U, T1, V, T2, and W, T3 to the motor. Be sure to separate line power wires from motor wiring using conduit or cable tray dividers. Connect the incoming supply wires to drive input terminals R, L1, S, L2, and T, L3. Don't forget to connect the incoming ground source. Note, if installing multiple drives, follow the grounding graphic shown. Once you've completed and verify all of the wiring connections, continue to step 7. Step 7. Reinstall the front cover and keypad. Then in step 8, you can energize the drive and confirm that it's ready. Activate the incoming power supply switch to energize the drive. You'll see the digital operator and LED status ring light up on the front of the FP605. Look for the initial setup screen and an illuminated ready light. If you see a fault or alarm indication, reference the troubleshooting instruction in the quick setup procedure and installation manual. At step nine, set the motor rated current or the FLA from the motor nameplate to E201 using the FP605 keypad. We will program the motor rated FLA current from the motor nameplate into the drive 
to protect the motor from overload conditions. This is the minimum step required to operate an induction motor. The goal in this exercise is to run the motor briefly to check for correct motor rotation. Start by exiting the initial setup screen. Press the F2 key and then press F2 again to gain access to the menu. Use the arrow key to scroll to Parameters, then press Enter. Scroll to the E Motor Parameters group and press Enter. Then scroll to E2 Motor Parameters and press Enter. E201 Motor Rated Current will be highlighted. Press Enter again and use the arrow keys to adjust to set E201 to the correct motor nameplate value and confirm by pressing Enter. Press F2 to return to the home screen. You have now completed setting motor rated current and motor overload protection on the FP605. The tenth and final step is to set the drive for local control and check the motor rotation direction. Press F2 to return to the home screen. Press the LORE or Local Remote button and make sure the corresponding green local remote light is illuminated. Warning! This next key press will cause the motor shaft to turn. Verify that the motor and equipment are ready to run and all tools and personnel are clear of the motor and any moving equipment. Press the F1 jog button to momentarily rotate the motor and check the correct motor rotation direction. Press and hold the F1 button if a constant 6 Hz low speed rotation is desired. It's a good idea to run the motor without a mechanical connection to the load to verify proper motor operation and direction. If the motor is rotating in the wrong direction, you can remedy this by swapping two motor wires on the output of the drive, UT1, VT2, or WT3, or at the motor's conduit box. This is illustrated in Additional Procedure A. If the motor is rotating in the correct direction, then you have finished the installation and primary operation quick setup procedure. You can now mechanically connect the motor to a driven load if applicable. Now we will touch on some additional procedures for some common installation steps related to control wiring and programming. These procedures may or may not apply to your specific application, however, they are very common application configurations for the drive. Additional information in sections B, C, and D focus on the control circuit. You can see the layout of the connections, the jumper and switch options for analog and communication selections, and a connection diagram with I.O. terminal functions. Additional information sections E and F are for setting the drive's frequency reference and run command source. You can find settings for the drive's frequency reference and run command in the menu under Parameters in the B application group under B1 Operation Mode Selection. Frequency reference options in B101 include analog inputs, Modbus communications, optional PCBs, pulse train input, or user input from the keypad. Refer to the FP605 technical reference for more information if needed. The analog wiring shown includes speed pot, 4 to 20 milliamp, 0 to 10 volt DC, and even a two-wire transducer. The run command settings are set using parameter B102. The options include digital input, Modbus communications, optional PCB, which includes Ethernet IP, 
Modbus TCP IP, and Profinet, or the keypad. We focus on the digital input selection when utilizing two- or three-wire control. Two-wire control uses a maintained contact closure, while three-wire control is typically used with momentary push buttons. Some additional information includes parameter groups, frequently used parameters, and troubleshooting resources. Well, now it's time for everyone's favorite segment, review questions. Review question number one, which button is used to jog the motor to check the motor direction? The F1 button is used to jog the motor at speeds up to the drive's default 6 Hz limit. Review question number two, if you would like to switch the frequency reference selection, what parameter is used to adjust this? The answer is B101, with possibilities including analog inputs, Modbus communications, optional PCBs, pulse train input, or user input from the keypad. Well, we told you that setting up your FP605 for fan and pump applications would be fast and simple. If you need assistance, we are just a phone call away. If you have any issues with startup, Call 1-800-YASKAWA for 24-7, 365 customer service at no charge. Be sure to have your serial number available for a faster response time. We make the complicated simple. Flexibility, sustainability, and ease of use. These are the hallmarks of the FP605 AC drive, an extension to Yaskawa's robust line of variable speed drives. At Yaskawa, we do everything in our power to make each experience with us better than the last. Because to us, it's personal. To learn more about the FP605, visit yaskawa.com forward slash FP605. And thanks for watching.